Hello, everybody. This is Vaginal Fantasy. Oh, I can hear myself somehow. <laughs> Did you do it again? <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Vaginal Fantasy. It is. Uh, we are on a new channel. We are on the Vaginal Fantasy channel. Look, it's a new Yay. room. Wow, beautiful. So okay. beautiful. Oh, my God, everything feels sparkly. So sparkly. If you don't know what this is, welcome. <laughs> we are in our new home, so we can be a little bit more self-righteous about what it is, but... This is a romance book club where every month we discuss um, a book that's in the romance genre that has a twist of either genre or history, like Anita Blake or Twilight, something like that. Um, so this is our 38th or 36th or so. It's something up there. It's in the upper 30s. So we've been doing this for almost three years. Wow. And isn't that crazy? How is that crazy? Happened? How? I know, wow. we look just as young, don't we? No, we do. Never. Younger. <laughs> <laughs> Through the magic of science. <laughs> Through the magic of science and whatever else. Uh, yeah. Lighting. So, <laughs> lighting. Science and lighting. That's exactly what it is. So, uh, thank you all for um, joining us in our new digs, and we hope to build this channel to something really, really cool over the coming weeks, months, and 36 more, at least. So... Welcome to my uh, co-host. At first, we have Kylie Casby. Hello. Bonnie Burton. Well, hello there. And Sophie in the background. Yeah, my dog. If you can see my dog, she's in the background asleep. She's healthy again. So, yay. Yay. And the fabulous Veronica Ballamont. I got some uh, whiskey and a vaginal fantasy glass here. Yay. That's a lot of whiskey. Yep. That is a lot of whiskey. Did you water that down at all? or It's got two melty ice cubes in it, so it's fine. Okay. Well, I guess you, you answered the question about what you're drinking. I um, created an experiment this month, and I have ginger ale, and then I put this much um, absinthe in it, and it is not good. Not no. Good. <laughs> not good. I wouldn't think it would be. But you know what? As the ice melts, it's going to be fine. Really? Yeah, everything's going to be fine. Or yeah, everything, the, the more the ice melts, the more you've already drank, which means it'll be definitely fine. Please don't set yourself on fire, Kyla. I'm not, <laughs> well, not this time. Not again. Unless the cat comes up, I'm okay. <laughs> we should remind viewers, too, that if they want to interact with us during the show, to use the hashtag vaginal fantasy, and we will all see it and integrate your comments into our show. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Veronica. Yes. Oh. Yes, we are good. And if you don't want all of your Twitter followers to see your comment, you can at Vaginal Fantasy to start the tweet off so it only goes to people who follow the Vaginal Fantasy account. And then you make your comment and use the hashtag so that way you don't publicly say vagina a lot. Some people are inhibited. If you're not, more power to you. Uh, Kyla, what are you drinking today or tonight? I'm drinking alcohol. Yeah, but... Oh. Okay, wait. Hold I on. More specific. <laughs> It looks like you're drinking a jar of marmalade. It's Tang to go to... Sp no, it's not. It's it's not. It's the same thing I had last month. It's still vodka and those, like, no-calorie juice things with stevia in them. It's how delicious. Do you, how do you drink out of a mason jar without it dumping all over you? Oh, I've gotten really good. You just have to close your mouth and make little tiny sips. <laughs> Pro tip from Kyla. We need to get a straw, camp. like a vaginal fantasy <laughs> straw of some kind. That'd oh, be I would love that. that would be <laughs> okay, it's it a crazy be, one. But it looks like we're flipping to each other really quickly a lot, and I'm starting to get a little motion sickness, so... Oh, I don't, I don't see that. I, I feel like maybe, okay, every single month we log into Google Hangouts, and everything is always different. Where to find the video is different, where to start the video is different, and it seems like now... It feels like the the how do you change from person to person is a little bit different. So don't get nauseated, Bonnie. I'm just gonna click on my picture, so it's That's just what I did. me, and, and I'm not being vain. Okay. So I don't. I just, I just clicked on Felicia's picture so I can stare at her gorgeous hair for the. That's episode. what I did. Okay, I, my my hair looks good because I was shooting Coaptitude, and for the first time ever, we actually had someone to do my hair. <laughs> So thank you. Was it your brother? Did your brother do your? My hair? brother did it. Yeah, I was like, here's a flat iron. Learn how to do it. Watch a couple YouTube videos. <laughs> Bonnie, what are you drinking? So we, uh, just to wrap it up, because I want to be consistent. Uh, so I'm using a wine glass that's almost as big as my head, and uh, <laughs> and I'm drinking a yellow Riesling. Yellow Riesling. Right. It's my favorite wine. Me too. Yeah. 
I don't like the Riesling. They're so sweet. It's yeah. I like I like Riesling when I'm in the mood for a sweet white. But I don't usually. It used to be my go-to before I knew how to drink. Uh, oh, is, that, is that a baby wine? Is that a baby wine? Kind of a baby wine. A little bit. A little it's bit okay. of a baby. It's a delicious wine. It's like a Gertzen Meyer, Gertzen Gertzen. Gertzen. All the Gertzen 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 Gertzen. I, I, if I drank as much whiskey as Veronica is drinking, I'd be passed out by now, so I have to start <laughs> I drank two bottles of Vouvray wine, which is an even sweeter wine than you can possibly imagine with Riesling or Gewürztraminer on my 21st birthday. And Look that's at her, why just like Gewürztraminer. Gewürztraminer. Oh, I just say Gewürztraminer. Gewürztraminer. You know, I worked at a, like I've mentioned on the show many times, I worked at a liquor store for three years, and I think I just bullshitted my way through that word for like a really long time in a... Is this what a Gewürztraminer? Like profession. Yeah, the good of it. German wine. Yeah. 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 When people go in for wine, unless they're wine snobs, I don't know. I, I for me, it was just like it's not in a box and it's cold, so I'm drinking it. I like Delicious. wine in a box now. Yeah, yeah. It, you can get it at Whole Foods. It's totally legal now. If you get it, it is Whole Foods, totally yeah. legal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some good ones. It's totally legal. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh wait, wait. Also, I'm wearing. Oh. I got my. Fat girl underoos. <laughs> you got some of those? Uh huh. I'm wearing pants, so of course. Nope. <laughs> over nope. the. None of us has that. Over the underoos. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Right, not wearing pants. <laughs> nope. Okay, fine. I'm not wearing any pants. Thank you. <laughs> uh, before we move on to the book discussion, um, we do our shout outs to our local hangouts. So during the month between our hangouts, we have a really awesome forum on goodreads.com slash vaginal fantasy. And people there talk about the books, the alt book, all sorts of different books, even off topic things like their own writing. And cool part, coolest part is they have local hangouts. So they get together in person or online through another Google hangout to meet other vaginal fantasy um, uh, fans who want to discuss this book or other books. So I like to give shout outs to what's happening. In November, in Gothenburg, Sweden, the Viking Booty met, the Jville Vajayjays met, the Chicago, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if they have a name yet, but uh, they also met, and the Buttered Crumpets in the UK met. And in December, we have the Vaginal Fantasy Down Under, which is Australia, meeting. We have the Ambassadors of Smut in Orange County, the Naughty Nashvillians, the Austin, Texas Reverse Cowgirls, and the Gotham Quills and Quins. All those are local hangouts that are happening. So if you want to join one or create your own, just go to the local group section of the forums on goodreads.com slash vaginal fantasy. Thanks, ladies, for keeping us going. So um, I just want yes. to let everybody know that's using the vaginal fantasy hashtag. Uh, I went ahead I'm I'm went ahead and I'm retweeting a bunch of our viewers that are showing what they're drinking. So it might look like an Alcoholics Anonymous in reverse meeting thing on our badge fan thing, but it's interesting to see how many wine drinkers there are as opposed to like Goldschlager or something. So I thought I would retweet that. So if you see a bunch of people drinking, that's why they're drinking on our on our Twitter. Uh, yeah. I don't think and anyone it, would ever question why people were drinking on our Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. I know. I don't know why I thought I needed to announce that, but I just felt like that was my last responsible thing I was going to say to them. So. That was really uh, nice. But also, I kind of really like gold, gold so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so our book <laughs> this month and our theme this month, so, so we're kind of like trying to focus the group. Now that we are on our own channel, we're going to add extra content. Thank you, Veronica, for doing the very first alt book blog. Yay. We're going to be doing that every month. All of oh, Each one of us will just rotate through reviewing the alt book so we can have more discussion points around that. And um, we're going to center around a theme every month. So we've been doing that anyway. But this month was Superheroes, and our main book was called Mind Games by Carolyn Crane, and uh, I can read the description as Bonnie. Let me, let me, let me click on your... As me? Because Bonnie's the only one who actually gets an actual book anymore, because she's yeah. cool about it. Well, so the book is called Mind Games, the Disillusionist Trilogy, number one, and the description is, Justine Jones has a secret. A hardcore hypochondriac, she's convinced a blood vessel is about to burst in her brain. Then, out of the blue, a startlingly handsome man named Packard peers into Justine's soul and invites her to join his private crime-fighting team. It's a once-in-a-lifetime deal. With little of Packard's hands-on training, Justine can weaponize her neurosis, turning it outward on Mid-City's worst criminals, and finally get the freedom from fear she's always craved. Is it, is it the end of her problem? 
There is a dashing police chief who's fighting a unique breed of outlaw with more than human powers. And while Justine's first missions, including one against a nymphomaniac husband killer, are thrilling successes, there is more to Packard than meets the eye. Uh, with Packard's help, Justine has freed herself from madness, only to discover a reality more frightening than anyone's worst fears. Bum, bum, bum. Wow. That was dun, dun. Listening to you, like, drunkenly slur that description is quite <laughs> <laughs> I had two sips of absinthe. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's very strong alcohol. Yeah, save it for the trial. Save it for the trial. <laughs> okay, somebody else go. Somebody else say what they li liked about this book and what they didn't like, or if they didn't. Whatever. Go. Go, Kyla. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> who goes? Who said? Kyla. Who? Kyla, okay. go. Kyla. Okay. I really love this because <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but I am neurotic. Um, and have a lot of anxiety and a little bit of hypochondria and so <laughs> panic attack. So anyway, um, it was awesome to see that turned into a superpower. <laughs> It's like it's like a dream come true for me, and um, <laughs> it was. I really liked it. Also, it was a little hard to get past Cubby um, being named Cubby and not <laughs> picturing him as your dog. <laughs> that was, also, a, little was kind of a jerk, and I was like, "There's no way Cubby's a jerk." Um, spoilers. <laughs> so <laughs> spoilers about Felicia's dog, and then um, uh, yeah, I I really liked it for you know. For those reasons, I thought it was really. It took a long time to to build up to um, the the actual plot too. I mean, like I think they really took their time, and I thought they were really. It was very intricate, and um, even though there were a few things that bothered me, um, just in terms of the, some the same kinds of things that bother me with urban fantasy and humor. Um, other than that, I loved this book. Hey, Bonnie, <laughs> what did you think? I really like the book, too, uh, for similar re reasons as Kyla. I'm a hypochondriac, so I was kind of, it was kind of cool that, I don't think we've read a romance book where the main character is a hypochondriac, have we? I don't think there's many that have been written, have they? I don't know. If anybody yeah, has no. any more, put them on Twitter, because I want to read all of them. <laughs> or like the dude is, but the lady isn't? I don't know. I that's like WebMD meets Fifty Shades of Grey. That would be <laughs> where it's just like, oh my god, I'm dying of everything, let's have sex. <laughs> that could be fine. Uh, no, I, I love that the le the main character is a hypochondriac. To me, that's uh, there are so many different things that happen in this book that I could relate to, and I could be like, yeah, I would totally do that. That's exactly what would happen to me. I totally get it. Um, I like that there was like a dashing police chief. I don't think we've had the, the dashing police chief trope uh, yet in our romance books. I can't think of one. We've had bounty hunters, and we've had like detectives and things like that, but not actually anyone running the police station. So, um, I don't know. I have a lot of, like, fanfic ideas for Arrow and Gotham. That and, <laughs> and Constantine. And Constantine. And, <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, and I guess on some level, Castle a little bit. But I just, yeah, just throw that in there. But no, I, I uh, for police chiefs. But I, I just like that that was in the book. And so I like the world building. Um, I, I'm a big fan of superhero stuff and supervillain stuff, so it was nice to have something that wasn't just vampires, werewolves, witches. You know, it was like, oh, superheroes for a change. That's actually kind of nice. So I, I was thrilled, and I want to read everything about this character. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, so I was definitely, and the sex scenes were great, and, yeah, I'm, I'm all in. So. Well, I, I just want to throw out, we're going to get to the characters later, but the awesome, awesome forum has made the love triangle um, Team Cucumber or Team Packard? <laughs> I mean, team, team Cucumber or Team Kebab? So, mm -hmm. we're going to get to it, but Team Cucumber oh, or Team Kebab, and we're going to get to why those are in the book, but I just want to give a big shout-out to whoever invented those, because it <laughs> made me laugh so hard. Yeah. Team Kebab! Yeah. <laughs> team Cucumber. Really? Wow. <laughs> Okay, Veronica, what did you think of the book? And then we'll get into the characters and everything. Okay, so first of all, it was amazing compared to the alt, so that, mm -hmm. there was that. Um, Sorry. Uh, I just feel so bad. Um, I really liked, it was such an original idea. I think what really, what I really dug about it is that I haven't, like we've all kind of said so far, is that I haven't really read a book like that before where there was a hypochondriac main character. And just the the general 
the powers that they have, the way they operate, all that was kind of new to me. And maybe I don't read a lot of superhero-y type fiction, um, but I really felt like it was pretty novel. Uh, and that's always exciting, especially in this space, because I feel like we retread over a lot of pretty common tropes time and time again. So this was that was pretty refreshing. Um, and the twist was actually a good twist. Like, I was really pretty surprised that that the police chief was not... Well, first they were like, oh, he's a bad guy. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. They've been kind of building him up in her mind throughout the whole book. Of course he's the ultimate bad guy. Of course he's Henji. And then at the end they're like, just kidding. No, he's not really as bad as you thought. Packard's a bad guy. And you're like, oh, that all makes sense. <laughs> and... Um, and they're like, okay, well, he's a bad guy, but he was actually keeping things in check. He wasn't really that bad. Um, and so I thought it was it was it was pretty good. Uh, I made some of the comparisons in in my vlog video about how like in Karma Girl things were kind of handed to us on a silver platter, like everything was pretty obvious. And this mm -hmm. one had a lot more surprises up its sleeve. So I, I I felt like that was a there was a good you know good basis for comparison between those two books in terms of that. Um, but overall, I really I really liked it. It was pretty gruesome. There were some pretty, like, the descriptions of, of how the uh, Silver Widow, or whatever her name was, like, put yeah. her, stuck her, her husband in a hole and let the ants eat his brains. I was like, whoa! Yeah. I can't get that image out of my mind. Can't get those ants out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> now, Did you I, see I, how I, the joke, like, came to me? And yeah, it's like, just like, as, as you were doing that, it. As, yeah. Yeah. Was it was like, almost a pun, but I'll excuse. It was not quite a pun, so I'll excuse. It wasn't you. quite there. It wasn't quite <laughs> there. But yeah, um, it was good. yeah. yeah. Uh, I love this book. I read it uh, several years ago, and I just became obsessed with it because, like you guys say, it's it's so original. Um, and I, I will be honest with you, and I think we could talk a little bit in general about superheroes. I am not a big superhero fan. I don't generally, especially. I tend to gravitate toward indie comics in general, and then I feel in modern cinema, whether you're talking on TV or in movies, that we have so many women characters who are incredibly just there. <laughs> they're there to make the hero vulnerable. They're there to make the hero do this. They're here. They're basically a appendage, an emotional appendage or ve plot vehicle for the hero, and I see this a lot. Lately, I've been ranting a lot against Barbara from Gotham and Iris on The Flash, both shows that I love, but characters who are just egregious in the, in the category of love interest who is just nonsensical and just not smart. So I just love having a, a heroine who can be kind of a superhero and sort of subvert all the tropes of um, superhero genre in a way that I haven't seen in a long time. And I'm such a hypochondriac and neurotic and everything, so I my inner monologue is Justine all the time. That's why I loved it so much. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't mean to like dog. I'm I'm sorry. I don't mean to dog on superhero movies or TV, but it's just like every time I see it, I'm I'm always looking out for that female character who's just not, who who's just there to right. be. I mean, it just really annoys to me. To be awesome. To be the, the same as what the men are there for. That would be nice. And, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're doing a good job on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Arrow's like that. Arrow and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has an like, equal amount of women who are both villains and superheroes yeah. that hold their own. Well, God, uh, has great like, female characters, too, and so does Flash. I mean, Flash has great... I love the scientist character. It's just, in order to be attractive to the superhero guy, you somehow have to be kind of a... a not, not smart, or... Or, or just very cliched. It's hard to get over the cliches of a girlfriend of a superhero. And even though that doesn't necessarily apply here, because she has her own power, yeah. um, it's, it's just a nice, fresh take. Yeah. I yeah, think it really is. Books are going to be totally different than comic books, which are going to be totally different than TV shows. Because I feel like with books, they... Well, maybe not with romance books. Romance books can fall into stereotypes pretty easily. Uh, and we've read many stereotypical type female in love interests and guy interests, but um, with this book, I really liked it just because the world building and such. But I'm, I mean, we could talk about this later as far as romance in TV shows that we watch right now, like The Arrow and uh, Agents of Shield and yeah. Black and all that. Off um, topic, off topic. But anyway, yeah, I just, I just think it's refreshing to have a world that's not 
Yeah. Like, how do you get around all the cliches of superheroes when we have them everywhere, right? So that's why I liked it. Yeah. I made, I made a straw poll um, <gasps> that you can access at uh, on our Vaginal Fantasy Twitter account. Um, so you can vote if you are Team Cucumber, Team Kebab, or Team Carter, who all, who is also your brother. Oh, yeah. That. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> who is also your brother? <laughs> but you didn't put Cubby on there because literally nobody wanted nobody Cubby. Nobody wants Cubby. Nobody oh, likes Cubby. Not one person. A jerk. We love your dog. <laughs> love, love your dog. So far, Team Cucumber is in the lead. I just want to put that out. Oh God, I gotta vote. Okay, let, let's talk about. Okay, let's just talk about overall the world building of the world. I've already said my piece on how I thought it was original. And everything. What did you guys think about the world building? Of did you buy that the superheroes were legit? Was it? Uh, did you just buy the world building, and was it interesting to you? It I bought it. Yeah, I bought it right away. Um, and then I love that they would just suddenly introduce things like, uh, oh, there's going to be the water wars, you know? And you're like, oh, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it kind of felt the way like I, I I saw Interstellar this weekend, and I hadn't read anything about it, mm -hmm. and it felt exactly the same way in that um, I I. I believed in it right away as everything was introduced. So, um, yeah, I totally, I really liked it, and I liked the way that it was just, it, you were, it was just introduced, and you just accepted it, and I liked it. Yeah, I liked, um, I found it was interesting that there are people who don't believe that these people with powers exist. Yeah. And it's kind of like a thing where they're like, well... No, I don't really buy it. Like, it's probably not real. But then it's so obvious that it is. Like, I guess they're still pretty underground, as maybe many superheroes are. But mm -hmm. I feel like in, in most worlds where there are super superheroes or people with abilities, it's pretty much out in the open. And usually they're kind of, you know, judged or... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It begins with a P. Guys. Prejudiced against. Prejudiced kind of like X -Men. against. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I really, in, in light of recent, recent events, I should definitely be more up on, on that particular vocab word. Um, <laughs> well, it's funny, not funny. Um, but it's a little drinky, drinky, and then suddenly my vocab goes out the window. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought that was kind of interesting that there are still people who aren't believers of these particular abilities, and that, but that they can manifest in different ways, and there's like three specific kinds, or however many certain kinds there were, or that, you know, they kind of really dig into, without too much, you know, ex, uh, not, not exploitation, not exhibitionism, not, um... Ex... Oh, um, ex the, no, this this thing where you the word, explain, where you explain stuff, the thing. You explain the stuff. Exposition. Ex exposition. Yeah. Ex exposition. <laughs> exposition. No, is that like an expo? Mm -hmm. Like a comic con? Yeah. Exposition. Okay, so um, <laughs> told you vocab words. Um, oh, and God, my is on. doing that too in a it's bad way. Nervous. They they explain like, oh, you get your powers when you're a little kid, and it's whatever that thing you most want is. It's like, oh, that's you know. Right, well, kind of suck because what if you really wanted a more different kind of power? Mm -hmm. But you're a baby and you're dumb and you don't know that. You're dumb. So. Babies are so dumb. They're oh my gosh, dumb. so stupid. They're useless and they can't do anything for themselves. Oh, and they don't care what you think. Get a job, babies. <laughs> Hold your own weight, you stupid baby. Why do I have to carry you? No, Literally. every time I see a baby, I'm like, you have legs. Learn walk, baby. Use them. What, if you didn't walk and you were in the wild, you'd be dead. You're lucky yeah. to love you because you're a baby. Exactly. They wouldn't be like, by a lion. I'm not going to eat you. I'm going to, oh, ooh, you're is that like, Is that why we want to stick their little feet in our mouths? Because they're like, rum, 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 Yeah, rum, they're like, eat, babies eat me. Back because babies have those sharp little fingernails that can, like, <laughs> break glass. Like, they're just like, there's. Why are they so sharp? Well, I don't sharp. And they need vitamin little. D or something. They need to thicken the they biotin shots or something, the baby. Well, oh, they need a cat scratcher. I don't know. Maybe they're like tiny little wolver. Oh god, I'm sorry to change the subject, but Quest Journals on Twitter just tweeted the most a picture of Prince with a beret on his head and it just made me laugh so hard because <laughs> Can we talk about the beret? Because I, I had issues with the beret. Okay, let's move into character, even though we need to come back to plot, but let's talk about character, <laughs> because Team Cucumber, Ooh, Team Kebab, what are you, who are you for? It is half and half still. It is split. 
Oh, <laughs> votes for cucumber, 18 votes for kebab, and six votes for Team Carter. Who is your brother? <laughs> Who is your brother? But he's not really your brother. He's mm. actually not your brother. He. What was his power in order to? Um, it was a hopelessness. Being pissy. Oh, Being God. pissy. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's pissy like a brother. <laughs> So basically, everybody in the disillusionist group has a neurosis that they then channel into a victim to make them reform them. So one of them is a gambler. Gosh, one of them is a hypochondriac. One of them is um, gets rid of hope. So all of them have a certain neurosis that they channel into bad guys, and or and that's their kind of team, which I thought was really clever. Um, but but I could never remember Carter's because all he did was just be hot everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Okay. okay. Let's talk about the characters. We can talk about. Let's just talk about Otto. Okay, so Otto is the police chief, and yes, he wears a beret the whole time. And yes, that was not sexy. I'm just gonna put that out there. In my opinion, what did you guys think? <laughs> no, I had a really hard time picturing it as being as him being sexy because I really liked him, as, <laughs> like as a character, but I could not get into the beret thing. I just had to imagine him. Just I just ignored the beret. I tried at first, like to be like, oh, green beret, like a green beret, you know, mm -hmm. and then, and that still wasn't sexy because I pictured the little ribbon that comes out at the thing, and I just still that's still not sexy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> green berets. Two <laughs> guy characters that wear berets, and that's GI Joe and Shea Guevara, and yeah. neither of those guys are hot to me. One looks like a guy who hasn't paid his college loans yet, and the other guy <laughs> looks like my dad. So Wait, it's not people. Are there people out there who have paid their college loans? Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, you jerk guys. <laughs> reminds me of every liberal arts college guy I've ever dated because they wore that shirt and because they had that poster up on their wall, but they could never really explain who Shay was. So I just, I, I don't know. So people on the forum said they try to imagine him as Shay because of Benicio del Toro's. Hot. Oh God, that's exactly. I couldn't get. I could never be attracted to Otto Sanchez because I literally pictured Benicio del Toro yeah. in a French beret sitting on a sidewalk in Paris sipping espresso like this. And I was like, that is just not, that is the worst <laughs> image of a man I could ever imagine. <laughs> I'll flip you. I'll and flip he did, oh, and Katrina, Katrina reminds us that uh, Otto also wore a cape. Oh, he did. Oh, <laughs> God. Was so, it the short cape? Wait, I can't remember. I just meant like, like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shoulder. You know, I, I went on a first date once with a guy who showed up to my front door wearing a cape. No. Yeah. And it was like 1997, <laughs> and he showed up at my front door wearing a cape. I'm like, that's an interesting fashion choice. And he, <laughs> well, I just think they needs to. It, the cape for men needs to come back. So he was it's, like... Trying to bring it back by himself, not realizing that's not how fashion trends start. And it was just so hard to like go to dinner with him and not start cracking up every time he left the table because it looked like he was about to go fight crime. <laughs> <laughs> he did it in such like he walked in such a slow way. I was like, dude, crime, run! <laughs> oh no! And then the Crosi mentioned uh, Jamie Heineman and his beret, and now I just want to die a little bit. Oh. He wore, he wore the beret because he had a fear of the same exact syndrome that Justine has, which is a made-up thing called vain star syndrome, and it's basically where you, you'd, it bas you'd have an aneurysm or something and die, and if you hit your head, it's more likely to sort of loosen it up. So, There's but, some there are choices. Like today, we saw a sneak peek of the new Sherlock special, and Cumberbatch is wearing a top hat, and Martin Freeman as Watson is wearing a bowler, and they totally do. They look great. So, so you one, think a bowler is sexy? I don't know about a bowler. And it's I'm very like there is a fedora. Chaplin, hot. <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't think Chaplin's hot? I don't know. I never looked at him close enough. I was just... Hitler mustache? Is that what throws you off? It's, it's cute. Yeah. It's the Hitler mustache. It's not hot. But Hitler it's ripped sad. it off of him. That, Chaplin yeah. did it first and Hitler yeah. made it bad. I mean, but he ruined it. He did it, it last. It. Yeah, it doesn't matter who... who who did yeah. it for a second? It's Hitler ruined. He ruined a lot of stuff. Did Hitler ever wear beret? Is there ever a Hitler beret? I don't remember. Oh God, that would be worse. Okay, so Otto. Okay, let me <laughs> did ruin Hitler a lot fedora. Of stuff. I, I wish he'd worn a fedora. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's so many other hats. There's so many other hats. Otto. Otto. <laughs> Otto's beret wasn't the only problem people had. People had a problem with Otto's name because it's not a sexy name, and people kept thinking like Mario Brothers kind of. 
Like Luigi, Mario, and Otto is the third <laughs> guy? That's the missing triplet? People, I mean, I, I have to okay, admit... Well, first of all, that's kind of maybe racist, because sometimes it's not an Italian last name. It's Italian and German. They're lumping them in with the Mario brothers. That's not good. Italian. They're Italian. I know that. They're I Italian like American. Sausage. I don't, I'm Italian. I don't care. I don't think. Okay. I'm... Second of all, okay. Let's let's just get overlook the beret and the cape and the fact that he looks like Benicio del Toro, maybe. So, okay. Okay. but what about his thick and cucumbery member? That was why everybody says Team Cucumber, guys, because yeah. there's a lovemaking scene, and I believe where does she mention the cucumbery appendage? Is it in the hot tub, which is always unsanitary? <laughs> Oh, it's unsanitary. Why would you get cucumber in a hot tub? Because a hot tub shrinks things, so it should be a Vienna sausage, not a No, 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 a hot tub, because it's, it's, if it was cold in there, it would shrink it. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Right? Sorry. I got my penis physics mess, messed up. Sorry. Yes. I know, I know. I knew you knew what it was. I know. Okay, but did you did you find <laughs> did you find him sexy during the lovemaking scenes? Because I found those very well written. Yeah. But still not him sexy because of the Benicio del Toro thing. I'm sorry. That's the last <laughs> person on earth I'd ever have sex with. I'm sorry, Benicio, you're excellent. Why? Really? Yes. I don't know why. Him and Jeff know. Bridges, never happening. <laughs> really? Together? No Bridges. Now people are sending us sexy pictures of men in berets. Oh, <laughs> God. More just upsetting than anything else. What <laughs> berets ever going to be the new kilt? So well, we you know what? You know what? I don't find Johnny Depp attractive. <gasps> well, now or then? Like Benny and June, Johnny Depp? Well, no, now. Not, not 21 Jump Street when, like, obviously, duh, you know, yeah. height of my hormones, but now. <laughs> Benny, Johnny Depp is kind of like, he could easily be on Gilmore Girls as a character. Johnny <sighs> Depp now is a little too emaciated and facial-haired and skinny and fragile and... He yeah. just makes very weird career choices. That's my problem with him nowadays. <laughs> that thing where he's a blonde art museum person is very odd. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that movie. Anyway, okay, we're yeah, so anyway, off sorry. topic tonight. Yeah, okay, sorry. Off, off topic. Take okay. a drink. <laughs> so, so, yeah, point is, uh, the point is, sex scenes were, were good. He's not sexy. Okay, so he wasn't sexy. Now let's move to, okay, so Otto... Veronica mentioned, and a lot of people on the forum feel very strongly about Otto. Like, some people are like, he wore a cape, he was too old for her, um, he hated the beret. But then a lot of people were like, I really loved him because he kind of was set up to be this villain, and then he revealed himself to be as vulnerable um, and actually kind of a good guy, but just maybe a little bit blind, blinders on a little bit with regard to empathy. But... Mm -hmm. It was a great emotional twist to set up this really bad guy and then humanize him in a really gray way. It's a black and white world until we actually get to see um, him as a character. And in the end, Justine ends up with him. So how did you guys feel about that? Um, well, I'm, I'm glad that she used her own druthers to kind of figure the whole thing out and didn't just blindly listen to Packard because, you know, the whole Packard thing, she kind of had a bad taste in her mouth from the very beginning because she was like, you forced me into this. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I might lose my, sh my shit if I don't continue to zing you, but at the same time, like, this was not my choice. This was not my, you didn't tell me what the ramifications of joining up were going to be. Mm -hmm. And she's already like on her, on her guard a little bit about the whole thing. And I'm glad that it wasn't a real clear cut, like love story between them, that she was pretty guarded about it. Um, but then Otto, like it, it kind of shows that her gut instincts were in the right place throughout the book, except for Cubby. I mean, that was just a total cluster. Um, no offense, Cubby dog. Um, <laughs> he's okay. He's not in the room. He's not okay. He's not oh, good. Okay. Good. Thank God. Um, but she had a gut instinct about Otto, and it was it. It turned out to be pretty true. Like he is actually a good guy trying to do the right thing, and maybe he didn't have all the information or didn't understand what exactly he was doing with his abilities. In in some cases, um, you know, accidentally letting people die, for example, mm -hmm. uh, not not optimal. Um, but he ha his his heart was in the right place. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was she she had good gut instincts, which we don't see probably as often as we'd like to in these kinds of books. Uh, our straw poll, Team Cucumber, is pulling ahead of Team Kebab. But it's because we're only talking about Team Cucumber. Let's talk about Team Kebab. So Packard, as a character, was um, incredibly sexy to me until someone posted a picture of um, Carrot Top. Or what the hell? 
What's that comedian's well, name? Yeah, Carrot Top. Yeah, Carrot Top. <laughs> On the okay, so we have a male redheaded interest, love interest. He is trapped by Otto Sanchez in this kebab place, and we eventually learn that he has the ability, the supernatural, you know, a superhero ability to help neurotic people channel um, and release their neurosis. So that's how he t forms this team. But he does it to Justine, and he doesn't tell her that if she joins and starts zinging him to get rid of her neurosis, then she can't ever stop. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people were very upset about Packard and on the forums about that. What did you guys feel about Packard's character, about the relationship? Was it controlling? Was he awful? Um, did he look like Carrot Top? What do you feel? <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't realize he was, a, he was redheaded. Is that, that was part of... That was in the story? He's, he's redhead? He was cinnamon colored. I always picture him like Jamie like, from Jamie like, from Outlander. That's what I thought of him. Like okay. Outlander, are we talking like Weasley Ginger? Uh, oh. oh, one of the Weasleys? I always pictured that guy who was in, um, what I wrote the name Life. down. Life. Uh, he, he was in Life. What is his name? He's Jamie. really hot. Dilly, D Lewis, Damian Lewis. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. If you had said Homeland, I would have known what you were talking about. Oh, yeah, I don't watch that. Oh, don't. I don't like that guy. I, he's okay. But anyway, yet the, as, <laughs> as uh, Kate, mindful at Mindful Zoo, said, the sex scenes with Packard, I think, were maybe hotter. Yeah. Yeah, Thank I think you. you're right. And also, like, I, when I pictured it, I mean, we, we could talk about this when we talk about casting. Mm -hmm. Don't ever think about Carrot Top when you think Redhead, because he's like the original vag blocker. <laughs> Wait, what? Why? I saw him recently at the farmer's market in San Francisco, by the way. That was weird. Did you say hi? What was he doing? Was he, he buying was carrots? At the... <laughs> hmm. What just happened? That's almost too easy, isn't it? What just happened? No, he was at like the... He was at, like, the he, no, he was at the farmer's market buying food. Maybe carrot top? Carrots. Oh. Yes, carrot top. Buying carrots. I uh, already no, said. I don't know if he was buying carrots. It was maybe also <laughs> other root vegetables. I don't know. <laughs> that would be great if he just ate carrots. It would actually explain a lot. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, there's other hot redhead guys, and to be fair, Benedict Cumberbatch is originally a strawberry blonde. He dyes his hair dark brown. I knew you were gonna bring that up. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it, Bonnie. <laughs> I remember pictures she posted on Tumblr of him as a redhead, and I was like, you know what Bonnie's going to say? She's going to say that Cumberbatch originally had red hair, and she probably will pull out a regular, regular picture of him. I knew it. Yeah, take a drink. Is this part of the game? If I mention Cumberbatch, you have to take a drink. Yeah. It should be. It should be. It should be. Oh, my God. No, I like Packard. I thought I agree with you. I think the Packard scenes were hotter. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty easy to please if the sex scenes are good. I don't. I don't know. I thought there was a good mix of sex scenes in this book, mm -hmm. but I don't. I don't know if I can. Which team I'm on? This is hard to figure out. Cucumber. Shelly on the Shelly on Twitter says the sex scenes were good, just few and far between. And she also says we're skipping over the Otto and Justine scene where he made her feel effervescence in her vagina. Hashtag oh. Elka Seltzer. Hashtag vaginal fantasy. Yeah, or Mentos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, pop rocks or pop rocks. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about yeah. pop. Pop oh. is dangerous to me. Yeah, I, I, I honestly I pictured him like like Jamie in in Outlander in the TV show because um, he said cinnamon haired. So I thought more brown with a little bit of red, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and then shorter hair than that, but still with some like wave to it. You know, mm -hmm. or even like um, the, uh, oh God, who's the guy who's playing Stephen Hawking, and who yeah. was in Les Miserables? Oh, um, 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 oh, I just saw that movie. Yeah, um, you know what I'm talking about. That guy. Yeah. Him. So oh, his name is that guy. <laughs> that guy. That guy. I get it. But bigger, you know. Um. So so I kind of thought of him as that guy, and then uh, so but then at the same time, yeah, he was totally like a like a like a pimp. I mean, he was totally like, hey, first one's great, you know. Yeah, and yeah, and she got all addicted to the high, and then he didn't tell her that he was like, no, no, and then you'll feel better forever, but he didn't tell her because you have to do it forever, and mm -hmm. that's not cool. I yeah, a, a lot of people in the forums were very offended by that. And I, I, having read this book three years ago, was so Team Packard. I was like, this is the hottest man in literature. Yeah. And now, having reread it, I was like, yeah, that was kind of a dick move he did mm -hmm. by controlling everybody and not telling them. And I liked the fact that Justine was like, uh-uh. She stood up for herself, which I really liked. 
I do too. But but he been you know he's stuck in this place for you know like he's maybe a little desperate and probably a little nutty from being stuck in the same place for eight to ten years. You know, mm -hmm. so maybe it's just like, oh, thank God, I, you know, and I'm just gonna do anything I can because I've got this special connection with this woman, and um, you know, I'm not, and I'm not excusing him. I'm just saying there are reasons, maybe. Mm -hmm. Then, then he's got to work through them and then be possibly excused by her only. Mm -hmm. Eddie Redmayne, thank you, Katrina. Eddie Redmayne, <laughs> yes. Even his name is even yeah. red. He's got red in the name. <laughs> red yeah. name. Um, yeah, like I said, I think the most powerful opinions on the forum were Packard and his controlling or not of controlling of Justine and the, the deception and the twist at the end that he isn't really that great a guy. But at the, at the, at the, I thought it was really great. You, you go in and you think Packard's the guy, the, the great guy, the good guy, fighting, fighting the bad guys. Then you think Otto Sanchez is the great guy, and then he's the bad guy, and then he turns out to be a gray guy. So does mm -hmm. Packard. So it, it really dealt with a uh, sort of a morality that we don't normally deal with, especially in superheroes. Like, you're either good or bad. There's no, like, oh, let's empathize with this person. Even if I don't agree with them, I empathize with their po point of view, you know? Which is one of my favorite things when things are gray like that. Mm -hmm. I, you know... Um, it, Right, like they did it in Buffy. They, you know, they've done it in Agents of Shield. A lot of the best sci-fi fi writers and said the alcohol. Um, look, <laughs> I lost my thing. <laughs> uh, no, that's. I mean, that because then it forces you to make the decision. It mm -hmm. forces you to think, and that's my favorite thing because life is not black and white. Yeah. Um, um, okay. okay. <laughs> if you want to ask a question about Justine, are we sure she's not a nymphomaniac and not just a hypochondriac? Because where, where do you are you asking that, Bonnie? Because we haven't talked about Justine. That's what I was about to move to. Okay, there we go. Transition. Take your <laughs> perfect. You're amazing. No, no, go. I mean, we need to talk about her, and that's an interesting that's point to bring up. She hasn't heard of STDs or pregnancy, but she seemed like. She just seemed kind of like a clueless nymphomaniac, not necessarily a hypochondriac. I don't know. If I was a hypochondriac, I wouldn't be having sex all the time because I'd be worried about diseases all the time. Am I, like, totally mm -hmm. overthinking this? It just feels like a lot of hypochondriacs aren't exactly free and easy with the sex with well, everything. Well, she, she must have her... Mm -hmm. I think she has her thing. I think she's got, like, a certain subset of diseases that she's more concerned about than others. Vascular. Like she's, she's not like washing her hands all the time. You know, yeah. she's not, you can be a hypochondriac and not be like OCD with, you know, washing hands and stuff. I mean, I don't know. I guess I guess I'm getting hypochondriac and germaphobe mixed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a hypochondriac, but I still kiss people. Well, not just random people. I mean, I'm picky. I would never drink out of a random person's glass. Oh, I, you really wouldn't? I've done that. No, I don't even think I drink after you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Kyla's Mason jug. And that, that's not a euphemism. I mean that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, what did you guys think of Justine and her issues? I I, th I think that she had a um a particular neuroses revolving around vascular things like um, embolisms and aneurysms. And mm -hmm. those were the things that really set her off. And as a person who developed certain neuroses that she had to deal with, not, you know, the, her name rhymes with Smila. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I understand that. So then, like, there's other stuff that you'd think that you would worry about, um, like, you know, Say taking Percocet with alcohol or something. You know, you see, you think you would worry about that, but you don't. You know, like so. There's just there's there's different. <laughs> there's it's a it's a very complex um, anxiety related disorder, mm -hmm. right? So I that's why I think that you know she probably wasn't that that wasn't her thing that she was worried about. She wasn't well, worried about STDs. Someone bought, brought up on the forum, which I totally agree with on it when I was reading it, that she just wore a random bathing suit at Otto's place. 
And I was like, yeah. that's unclean. Yeah, yeah, she did it. I would not do that. Silver Widows, too. She, borrowed a, she bar- wore her weird silver bikini at the Silver Widows place, too. Who does that? And who just has bathing suits hanging on a wall for guests to use? Like, what yeah. is that thing rich well, people do? I think if you owned a hot tub, you would have some extra bathing suits maybe on hand for people who don't want to go totally uh, commando. For kids, would they be new with like silk stuff in them? Like chlorine? <laughs> no. Would you wear someone's underwear? Because if you're if you're not going to wear someone's underwear, you would, you should not be wearing their bathing suit because bathing suits are even worse. If I was going to be sitting in a vat of chlorine, and that's what a hot tub is. So you can remember, chlorine kills everything. So. It's like mm. so disgusting to start with. It is, it's it's so all disgusting. kind of gross. Yeah. yeah. Basically, just a vat of like vag and pee. Well, like, bubbling and like Everyone's simmering and like other stuff. Oh, pee, yeah. pee particles and just <laughs> mixing in together and this frothy. Shooting. Like, froth. and, oh. You guys, you're ruining hot tubs. It's not like an STD cauldron. Well, they're just, they're not that sexy. I think that we're all grown up enough to finally admit that. I, will, I love hot tubs. I want one in my backyard. I would live in a hot tub if I could. I just wouldn't get a gross, one of those wooden, wood-burning hot tubs that you see in the back of, like, Utney Reader. I wouldn't get, like, a hippie hot tub. I'd get, like, oh. with, like, a sound system and a light show. You can get... <laughs> You can get really nice hot tubs now. They're not all, like, 1970s orgy props. They're actually, like, you could get the Mercedes of hot tubs, and it's all, like, super clean. And it's I like, like hot tubs. It's I'm still kidding. a gumbo for genitalia. That's yeah. all it is. You just have to know what yeah, you're getting into. It's like it's not stone soup, okay? It's I, not, yeah. you're not bringing the village together. I, I, would, I would like a like hot tub to relax in. I don't necessarily like to bring water into my sex life, or else I would still have a water bed. <laughs> oh god, water beds. Oh, oh god, water beds. <laughs> Don't so bring funny. us back. <laughs> yeah, the bed does all the work for you. <laughs> it does it? Doesn't it make it harder? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's like a motion thing. It's physics. It's physics. Oh boy. I I don't think I've ever read a romance book with a waterbed lovemaking scene in it. I really feel mm-hmm. like that needs to be written. You know what? Oh. I will find this one. I will, okay. I will make that an alt pick. And I, when I do my vlog, okay, yeah, I'll about waterbed sex the whole time. Oh God. Okay. Um, what about Justine? Okay, let's not talk about sex. Yes, she was attracted to a lot of men. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, Who to, to defend <laughs> Cubby, to defend Cubby, wasn't Cubby written like any other girlfriend of a superhero does? And in fact, it didn't even matter about his gender. It's like the significant others of girl, of superheroes. They have a hard time to be interesting because he basically was that. What are you doing? Oh, I'm hiding my stuff. Well, I'm perfect. I'm gonna judge you. I mean, isn't that what every you know partner of every superhero ever does in any? Yes. Yeah. It totally reminded me of Rounders. Do you remember that movie with Matt Damon where they're? Yeah, and his girlfriend, uh, the cute blonde one. Uh, oh yeah, that one. Yeah, the, and get your mom. Get your mom. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and that's her whole part is to just be mad at him for having a gambling addiction. And mm. she just she just gets mad the whole time and dumps him and doesn't doesn't ever even she, she's just she's super one dimensional but perfect. Yeah. So it's basically a love interest problem versus yeah. like a gender problem even because like I mean there are I'm sure gender problems in and because they're just a lot more superhero guys but it, well, it's, it's just a, a hard it's a hard p- person to be. A, a, yeah. Superhero problem. I mean, dating a superhero, they're always going to be in the spotlight. Their hours are crap. They're always getting groupies. I mean, it's like dating someone in a really a popular, celebrity. Yeah. You know, that's always on tour, and then they're always going to be super judgy about everything you do. And even super villains dating a super villain, I think, would be a little more fun. But mm. they're really you can't have pets if you're in a relationship with a super villain because you never know what's going to happen to them. If they're going to be experimented on or something. True. And True. Then, or just shaved and like superheroes do best when they're like dating super villains because the mm-hmm. second gotta be great. Or it's got to be superhero with another superhero. Though I'm totally still against Wonder Woman and Superman. I don't like that either. Freaking I like Wonder Batman. Woman and Batman. Uh, yeah, like exactly. Like Batman and, and Catwoman are like the perfect sexual tension situation. Whether you're reading the comics, even in the animated series for kids, they still flirt. I mean, it's it's great, and I like that. I hate Lois Lane. I hate human girlfriends for superheroes, and I hate human Aww. girlfriends. For 
Because they're never going to be good enough. I mean, seriously. I mean, that's just, like, impossible. And it's just, yeah. like, I like it when they're an equal relationship. And you can't have an equal relationship when one of you can, like, leap over tall buildings and, like, melt steel with your eyes. I mean, what's the yeah. point to that? Like, you're really good at cutting coupons or you're mm -hmm. good at, like, finding deals on Amazon. It's not going to be the same thing. Well, so maybe you're, like, you're better about cleaning the cat box. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's, I'm just saying. Power. That is the superhero. Power. <laughs> that means a lot. Right. Okay, question. Question. Uh, uh, regardless of the love co context, what do we think about Justine as a character? Do, did you like her? Do, a lot of people found her to be very unlikable on the forums, um, oh. which kind of surprised me, but I get it. They're not, a, a lot of the characters aren't necessarily likable, but they're very multidimensional in my opinion. But what did you think about her um, behavior? Did she act too young? A lot of people said that too. What did you, what were your impressions of her as a person? And did you like her arc through the story? Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't like the. I didn't like that she was. It, I've had this problem in a lot of. Okay. Ah, I've had this problem in a lot of um, of of urban fantasies where they they write. It's like they write the woman for men, in some ways, where she's constantly being put into these, she's like, oh, and then I put on a little skirt and a little tank top and strappy heels, and I'm like, why do I care? Why are, Why didn't you just put on some jeans and something uh, cute that, you know, like, that I would care about? What, you know, that most women would care about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, it's cool when you're like, oh, God, and then I put on this amazing dress for this one time, you know, like, like, girl stuff. But, like, every time it was like, oh, I, and then I was freezing in the bus because I was only wearing strappy heels. You know, and it's just, it was so annoying. Plus that, then, and her calling her, her the people that worked for her, her underlings and things like that were, were very annoying to me. So mm -hmm. I, I liked, I liked her neuroses. I liked the fact that that she had them. I liked that part of her character, and I liked the, gr the growth of that, but I didn't like the other part. It felt like it was not written for me. Mm, interesting. Or, or as a woman, not just Ver for Kyla. Veronica, what did you think? Wait, which part was not written for you? Sorry. The <laughs> part with the, strappy, with the strappy heels and the little skirts and the things that she was always like, every outfit was, was tiny and like a little tiny thing and little nubby skirt and strappy heels every time. And I didn't understand why I would be interested in that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I was kind of, I was annoyed with her with the whole like, cubby interaction because it seemed mm -hmm. just so superficial. And she knew it was superficial, and that was kind of yeah. the whole entire point. Mm -hmm. um, but it was so obvious and over the top. And then, like, when he just, like, cheated on her and she was like, ah! like, Whatever. She was yeah, kind of cheating on him guys. with a lot of people. Yeah, she had already. Yeah. I mean, it, it does not. I, I mean, does it excuse it? I don't know. I guess maybe. Yeah. No. They had a know. terrible relationship. They oh, did have a. Did oh, they have a terrible relationship though? Because it seemed like their relationship was kind of okay. Like they got along. They snuggled on the couch. They did stuff, and then she kind of went like batshit and just disappeared. And if she had been a little more honest with him, I think maybe it could have worked out more. But she mm -hmm. lied to him constantly. You know, for really no reason. If she, like, he knew she was a hypochondriac, she could have been like, listen, I'm doing this thing. It's helping work out some of my issues. It's like a really, I feel That's like true. it's a really good thing. And maybe she didn't have to give him all the details, but was a little more forthright with what she was doing. Maybe things could have actually worked out with them. It's true. Yeah. He was absolutely right that she was a hypochondriac. And, and he was finally just fed up. And I, I you know, I understand that. That being going through that, like, like, oh my God, just come on! Everyone knows you don't need to go to the ER right now, right? Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> like except for that person. So, yeah, that that's you have a good point. I feel like Cubby, Veronica, like Cubby was just there to talk to like other guys to get with Justine. Like, I just feel like he really didn't have a real point to be in the book other than that. And I, I, I like Justine, except it was it was strange to me. I don't know, maybe it's not strange, maybe it's kind of empowering that they, they describe her as medium pretty, but every... Oh, yeah, I wanted to bring that up, because so, guy, so many people on the farm were mad about that. Right, every guy she yeah. meets thinks she's perfect and wants to date her. Uh, I don't know how realistic that is, uh, especially since she's neurotic on top of being medium pretty. That doesn't always spell, hey, number one match.com. Set up. So I just I don't know. It was weird that why why even bring up medium pretty? Like it just seemed like such a random way to describe her. Like, yeah. 
But like, then she's just kind of hate her. If that she, way. But don't you hate him when it's like I'm so perfect and she's like, oh, I was a cheerleader and I look, I look beautiful, and then she acts like she has low self esteem over even though she's like a total supermodel. I hate that too. Who we know like that who are super drop dead gorgeous, but they think they're ugly, and you don't know if they actually think they're ugly or they're just pretending to say that they think they're ugly to get more compliments. Yeah. It's like it's like that weird humble brag, right? Like it's yeah. Oh, I I look horrible, you guys. When actually that person knows they look awesome. Yeah, and I'm they, so fat. I'm like two pounds, you know, overweight. And then you're right. <laughs> really skinny girls complain about their weight when I'm around. I want to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like you. Have no idea what fat is. Like my rolls, have rolls. Like I don't have muffin top. I have a muffin store, and I'm okay with that. But don't like. I don't know. Don't bring, I like, don't bring in your weight issues when the person next to you weighs twice as much as you. Like, that's kind of a etiquette don't. Mm -hmm. I, no, I did that to my friend yesterday. She was, we're, we're going to go get blood on Thanksgiving, and she was like, she was like, oh, but they always want me to give it twice, and they're like, they'll probably want you to give it twice because you have an interesting blood type. And, and I was like, oh, yeah. And then uh, she's like, but I can't give it twice because they're like, you have to be over 150 pounds. And I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, yep, I'm 150 pounds. <laughs> Maybe That's more. I don't know. I ate a donut in bed the other night. I had. A I'm a Roman emperor. I don't know. Roman emperor. I don't know. Okay. I mean, you know, so I, I don't want there to be any illusions. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay. like, the medium pretty thing just seemed weird to bring that up and how they described her and it was hard for me to picture what medium pretty means yeah like, they always have like in those 80s and 90s like movies where the girl's supposed to be dorky but she's really just super hot but with glasses on and then the minute she takes off the glasses suddenly it's a makeover like, yeah, but it, but to argue against, because somebody on Twitter said, I like that she thought she was medium pretty, but then another one said the fit that she thought she was medium pretty was bragging. It's almost like we don't like it when a, a woman is confident in what she has. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't like it if she's super pretty and is confident about that. You can't have that because that's arrogant. Like, there's um, no winning. There's right? no winning for a woman who'd be like, you know what? I'm pretty attracted the way I am. I might not be perfect, but... I'm pretty hot, and I, that's what I kind of liked about Justine, because she was okay with being who she was and confident in, in it, even though she knew she wasn't, like, a supermodel. Like, yeah. can we, is it, like, a natural thing for us to not like people to even be confident? I think so sometimes with other women. I don't know. That's yeah, just I, no, I think you're absolutely right. With women, I think you're yeah. absolutely right. We, we don't like it. There's there's no winning with women if, if they think that they're, they're not attractive. You're like, well, then you're a victim. And then if you are, you're, you're overly confident. Then they think that you're arrogant. And then if you're even in the middle, they're like, well, you're just pretending. You just want compliments. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's like, ha ha! What it's do you do? So <laughs> it made me feel like this book was just pan. It was kind of like pandering. The yeah. crowd because yeah. like look at our heroine she is medium pretty and yet look at all these guys still want to have sex with right. her right and she's still wearing strappy heels and she's like, yeah she's just like way. all of us <laughs> she's medium pretty <laughs> I think that's like uh, that's that was <laughs> medium pretty is <laughs> that used to be the way that they would film porn in the 80s is they'd have really ugly guys because they thought the guys watching it would get insecure mm. if they saw hot guys in a porn. So that's why there's a lot of really ugly things. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it's hilarious. I never thought about that. Yeah. Uh, where things have changed a little bit, hopefully, now. But, I mean, that's I kind of understand. I wouldn't know. Folks, you don't want the perfect girl to be your heroine because you want a Jane Eyre-type quality to your lead where she's not perfect, she's not super glamorous, she's not super beautiful, but she, because she's a full character, then mm. you see, oh, well, that person's worth getting, like, everything she wants out of love as opposed to someone who's been handed everything all the time. Mm -hmm. well, see someone who's privileged get more privileged. That's boring. That's, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's just my thoughts on why they would make her medium pretty as opposed to, like, super gorgeous or yeah. super fugly. Okay, well, just briefly, uh, we need, uh, can I, I just want to talk about, about a couple things and then we'll do casting and then we'll move on. Um, first, before, we didn't really talk about the plot, which we did a little bit but I just wanted to ask one, throw one question out there. Did you think it was moral 
what the disillusionists in Packer was doing. Because they were, they were taking this woman, the silver, uh, the silver Widow or whatever, and she was a terrible person. Yes, she committed crimes and she was never convicted of it. But they basically ruined her life. And she wasn't a good person, but do you think that was right? And I, I don't know. Just I, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, you mean the vigilantism is always fun unless it's something involving you or your life. You know, <laughs> like it's always <laughs> it's always exciting as long as it's not you being the target of the vigilantes. Um, but it's it's uh, you know what I mean? Like it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy, and in, in this world, I mean, clearly some of those people were doing awful, horrible things, and they, you know, maybe like that one guy, what was his name, that they kept following going back to, the one that had screwed over her father. Oh, oh yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah. Totally. But by the way, that was kind of a weird, like, random subtext to this whole story that, like, that had happened. I thought that was going to be going to be a bigger plot point, but really it was just a <laughs> way to integrate I don't know. It was it was kind of odd. Um, Do you think it comes up in the other books? I don't think so. I think it was resolved at the end when he was reformed and showed oh, how but good. Then they're like, but the reform. Yeah, because he just wanted love or whatever. But it did mm. kind of come back, like, because someone says, like, well, let's see if it sticks. Like Otto or or someone at the very end of the book was. It was like almost the last, the very last chapter. They were like, well, you know, it, this might not actually have taken. Um, so I feel like that's is going to come back in later books. Um, mm. Though I don't intend to read them, probably. Um, not because they were bad, but because I never, except for Kate Daniels, read any more books. <laughs> Did you read a lot? Are you read a lot more than Kate Daniels? I'm almost done, yeah, the whole series. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm totally into it. Um, you yeah. like me with the Cressley Cole. I hate yeah. her. Nope, love her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that, that, that thing will probably come back around again somehow mm -hmm. and, and be like, maybe this whole thing hasn't actually, didn't take, didn't stick in some way. Yeah. Um, la okay, a question from the forum. I mean, we've been touching on a lot, but Kayla from the forum asks, if you had a high cap power, one that was specifically mentioned in the book, which one would it be? So let's do a rundown. What are all the powers? Because I don't remember them all. Telekinesis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the architecture, being able to form architecture and trap people. Being able to uh, read. Wasn't there a mind reader one? Mind Definitely reader. a mind reader. There's a revisionist. A mind revisionist. Um, Good. God, there were there were a lot of them, um, and I can't remember a lot of them because we didn't um, emphasize them. Uh, the, of course, Packard being able to channel people's emotions, mm -hmm. or... Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can open it up. Let's open it up to, to beyond just the book, but of that type. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, would like to, I would like to be able to convince people. Like, that would be fun. You know, like, what those old... I always loved, like, Elmer Gantry. You know, that, that um, old-time movie where the, the preacher would go around and convince people in the tents to, like, join his sort of evangelical... Not not like that in a religious sense, but they'd be able to the, the ability to persuade people. Like a Jedi yeah. mind trick, like a Jedi. Yeah, mind kind of a Jedi mind trick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's persuasion. You, yeah, persuasion, would be yours. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we've talked about this when we talked about what powers we want. Like, I would love to immediately be able to transport anyone instantly to like the middle of the Sahara Desert. <laughs> that specific. <laughs> that is oddly specific. Like a, yeah. <laughs> A bunch of drunk guys outside by the bus stop by my where I live, screaming their heads off and being like violent, you know, have mental problems type people. I I'd be like, yep, you're off to the desert. If it's like a whole gaggle of drunk sorority girls, up, oh, going to the desert. If it's like <laughs> you're off the island, <laughs> like someone mugging people, and I see like a mugging happen, eh, going to the Sahara Desert. Like I would just transport those people. Now, if that seems mean, because you don't want the whole desert to just be douchebags, then I that would That seems mean to the desert dwellers, yes. The mm -hmm. desert yeah. dwellers, yeah, Burning Man, uh, which is redundant. Um, I guess I would uh, like to be able to mute people, and I'm the <laughs> only one to mute them. So if I mute you, it's like you mute someone on Twitter, right? When mm -hmm. you talk, I'm just not going to hear you anymore, but I'm the only one that, like, I can... I'm the only one that's in control of that. So if I, you have to do a lot of good in your life for me to unmute you. So yeah, I like that one a lot. 
feel like mm-hmm. these are like grouchy old lady superpowers. Like, I'm not thinking of anything like magical or like something that would no, be. That's fine. No, no, no. Because this book specifically is a little less yeah. ma- magical and yeah, so it's more emotional and or subtle. Well, like, yeah. I'm not crime. I'm just trying to be less annoyed. Yeah. What about you, Veronica? Um, it'd be fun. I, I always go right to the tech stuff, so I'd like to be able to fix any tech problems just by, like, thinking about them. You know, like, a piece of software is not working, I can somehow fix it in my brain, or, like, a gadget's not working, I could just, like, mm, mm. Do you want people to know, Veronica? <laughs> what? Do you want people to know that's your superpower? Because I feel like your, call, your phone would ring all the time. No, people... yeah, it'd have to be a secret. I, they'd just mm-hmm. have to think that I was, like, really good at tech support. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I have to fake it sometimes. Be like, no, I can't fix this. Sorry. Wait, 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 I don't I'd be calling you all the time about how do you send an attachment? How do you make an Excel spreadsheet? I don't remember what my Wi-Fi password is. Can you figure this out? Like that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a good thing for us. A lot of it just turns into Geek Squad. Totally. Yeah, yeah. That, but you know what? You. It's a good. It's good enough. You. You don't want to sit with it too long, but it's a good enough. Okay, Kyla. Um, I think that I would really like to be able to uh, have people give me whatever I needed emotionally. Hmm. Yeah, just even if I had to exchange my emotions for theirs, but but if I didn't and they had the emotions to spare, I would I would love it if like just for whatever reason. Um, I was about to like break down and cry, and I knew it was a really bad moment to break down and cry. That that I could just do a thing with my hand or whatever, and they and they would just like, and I was just like, hey, I'm cool, I'm whatever, you everything's great. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'd just be like, totally fine. Wait, is your super? So I'd be like, why is that person crying over there? That's is weird. your superpower <laughs> that you could control emotions, or is your superpower if you're about to cry instead of you crying, you make someone else cry? I don't really want to make the other person cry, but if if I had to, I would. <laughs> if they couldn't handle it, that's that, that's not my problem. That would be super <laughs> hilarious if you were like all of a sudden super turned on, but you didn't want to be turned on, and so you made someone else like, on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're meeting like a sexy book on the airplane, yeah, that never happened like, to me at all, and suddenly it's like like awkwardly all worked up. Right. Because I'm like, I gotta go to work, so and I have to get off the bus now, so yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. I like I feel like this is the best superpower ever because if you're like super angry and you don't want to be angry, and then you're at like church and then you make the minister super angry. Mm-hmm. You're like, like you just want to throw a tantrum but you can't, so you like look at somebody who never throws a tantrum and they suddenly. Say, I mean, that's this is brilliant. I love this superpower. That's a good one. That's a good one, Kyla. Thanks. Don't come near me though. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't do it to you. Oh, I know you wouldn't. Okay, last thing, casting, 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 casting. We had a lot of opinions on the on the forum. Okay. Hear them. Okay. okay. Um, I already said Damian Lewis and Benicio del Toro for Justine. <laughs> Justine was hard for me. I kind of and there were some good. Uh, I mean, like Amy Acker kind of came up for me because she oh. is really pretty, but you know she's very humble. And I thought that would be a nice quality for Justine. It's like understated pretty as opposed to out there in your face. Exactly. Favorite. A lot of people said on, on the forums, Adrian Padalecki and um, Natalie, Natalie Dormer, yeah. Emily Blunt. Somebody said me. I'm like, you have good taste. <laughs> Nina Dobrev, Charisma Carpenter, Emma Stone. And somebody said Kyla. Oh, Susan said Kyla. So. Oh, really? thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. What are we even doing, Tommy Chop Stewie? I only get you always one. get the kick-ass ones, Veronica and Bonnie. Come on. Yeah, I know. We get the neurotic ones. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be Kate Daniels. You guys can be whatever you want. I'll take. You'd be a great take, story. Kate Daniels. So, right. <laughs> what do you all think for casting then? Did anybody else have any opinions on casting? I I, I thought Emma Stone, so they took they took that away. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Kyla? Emma Stone. I oh. thought that. I um I like Olivia Wilde, but she might be a little too pretty. To be medium pretty. It's hard to know like which celebrity counts as medium pretty because I think Olivia Wilde is the most beautiful person I've ever seen. I acted uh-huh. around the house and I literally forgot my lines because I'm like, I'm sorry, you're too pretty. Like I literally <laughs> said that to her. Who looks like that? You said that on set. 
I did because her face is the most perfectly symmetrical thing ever created. I was it like, is. I can't stop staring at your face. Okay. It is like it's like you think Natalie Portman is pretty, and then you look at Olivia Wilde, and you go, oh, oh, something can be prettier than that. How is that possible? You know what's great too? If you watch the most recent season of Portlandia, she plays like this, like animal rights activist, yeah. punk rocker. Oh yeah. yeah. They it's still look like a supermodel. I'm like, you can't, you can't do that. Like, you're ruining yeah. the like bar for all of us. Uh, yeah, so, no, Jean Luc Picard is in my town right now. Maybe what? He's, Why? I he's filming a, a a movie, The Green Room. Oh, neat. I can't oh, cool. say why. I know that I just know some people that are maybe gonna be in it and stuff. Okay. <laughs> maybe okay. I'm changing it up. So instead of Olivia Wilde, wow, because you're right, she's too pretty. Uh, maybe the girl that played Juno. Oh. 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 Ellen Page? Ellen Page. Ellen Page. Okay. What about, what about what's her face? Who's like, like, like Tyler. Yeah, like I know she's gay in real life, but I feel like she's pretty, like she yeah. could fit the bill of pretty but not like drop your glass of wine gorgeous when someone walks in the room. Emmy Rossum I got from Twitter. That's a good one. Mm. That is a good one. I, I was thinking oh, about Rose Tyler just because of the, the dyeing her hair blonde. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what about uh, what real about, name? Whatever her real name is. Any other? We we kind of t went uh, over Otto, and then we yeah. kind of went over Packard as well. Did anybody else have any guys that they wanted to throw in? Uh, I forgot what hair color is Packard. Is he the redhead? Red. Cinnamon. Yeah. Are you said I'm Jamie? I'm thinking uh one of the Wesley Weasley twins. <laughs> so Fred or George or whatever. They're pretty cute. Any of them? Please, I think it fit that mold pretty well. And then Otto, Prince, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, guys, thank you so much for attending our first Vaginal Fantasy on our own channel. Um, we'll be doing the alt the weekend, the week on the Friday before all of our hangouts. Our next hangout is on the 30th, but I need to double check with all the ladies that they're going to be in town. So put the, a pin in that and look at the forums, and I will um, correctly put that date um uh, on the weekend and make sure to subscribe and spread word that we've moved the channel if you love romance novels if you like discussion about books if you like the way that we participate please support us because <laughs> we like to get our what what I'm drunk <laughs> yeah. I like how you said that if you like the way we participate which is such a nice way of do you like 80% of us talking about tangents <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, so next month we will be okay. So next month I pick two books. Okay. And we are the theme is Christmas werewolves. Ho <laughs> ho. Oh, specific, uh -huh. right? Oh, so good. the main pick is called Wolves Bane and Mistletoe. It's an anthology of short stories by a lot of great authors we love, like Kate Daniels' author, and um, I'm not sure if this author is, but Crisley Cole. I think a lot of authors we read had a short story in this collection. So I'm excited about that as our main pick. And our alt pick, which I'm going to review in a vlog, is called <laughs> A Seal Wolf's Christmas by Terry Spear. <laughs> Wait, say it again. A what? Wolf's it's a team of seal soldiers that are actually werewolves. Yeah. Wait, the seals? Like they're seals? Like, no, no seal wolves. It's not the animal, but the seal, like the Navy seal. Navy yeah. Seals who are werewolves. Okay. That's hot. That's hot. That's kind of hot. That's kind of hot. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't know, dude. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, tune in. We'll see you, and, and everybody have a great holiday this week. Yay! All right, thanks for watching. Bye! Bye! Bye. 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 <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Vaginal Fantasy. Oh, I can hear myself somehow. <laughs> Don't you do it again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is Vaginal Fantasy. It is. Uh, we are on a new channel. We are on the Vaginal Fantasy channel. Look, it's a new Yay. room. Wow, beautiful. Wow. So okay. beautiful. Oh my god, everything feels sparkly. So sparkly. If you don't know what this is, welcome. <laughs> we are in our new home, so we can be a little bit more self-righteous about what it is. But this is a romance book club where every month we discuss um, a book that's in the romance genre that has a twist of either genre or history, like Anita Blake or Twilight, something like that. Um, so this is our 38th or 36th or so. It's something up there. It's in the upper 30s. So we've been doing this for almost three years. Wow. And isn't that crazy? How is that crazy? Happened? How?
I know, wow. we look just as young, don't we? No, no, no we do. Never. Younger. <laughs> <laughs> Through the magic of science. <laughs> Through the magic of science and whatever else. Uh, yeah. Lighting. So, <laughs> lighting. Science and lighting. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for um, joining us in our new digs, and we hope to build this channel to something really, really cool over the coming weeks, months, and 36 more at least. So welcome to my uh, co-host. At first, we have Kylie Casby. Hello. Bonnie Burton. Well, hello there. And Sophie in the background. Yeah, my dog. If you can see my dog, she's in the background asleep. She's healthy again. So yay. Yay. Yay! And the fabulous Veronica Ballamont. I got some uh, whiskey and a vaginal fantasy glass here. Yay! That's a lot of whiskey. Yep. That is a lot of whiskey. Did you water that down at all? or? It's got, it's got two melty ice cubes in it, so it's fine. Okay. Well, I guess you, you answered the question about what you're drinking. I um, created an experiment this month, and I have ginger ale, and then I put this much um, absinthe in it, and it is not good. Not no. Good. <laughs> not good. I wouldn't think it would be. Wow. But you know what? As the ice melts, it's going to be fine. Really? Yeah. Everything's going to be fine. Or yeah, everything, the, the more the ice melts, the more you've already drank, which means it'll be definitely fine. Please don't set yourself on fire, Kyla. I'm not. <laughs> well, not this time. Not again. Unless the cat comes up, I'm okay. <laughs> we should remind viewers too that if they want to interact with us during the show to use the hashtag vaginal fantasy and we will all see it and integrate your comments into our show. Yeah. Oh yes, thank you, Veronica. Yes. Oh. Yes, we are good. And if you don't want all of your Twitter followers to see your comment, you can at Vaginal Fantasy to start the tweet off so it only goes to people who follow the Vaginal Fantasy account. And then you make your comment and use the hashtag so that way you don't publicly say vagina a lot. Some people are inhibited. If you're not, more power to you. Uh, Kyla, what are you drinking today or tonight? I'm drinking alcohol. Yeah, but... Oh, okay, wait. Hold I on. More specific. It looks like you're drinking a jar of marmalade. It's Tang to go to... Sp no, it's not. It's it's not. It's the same thing I had last month. It's still vodka and those, like, no-calorie juice things with stevia in them. It's how delicious. Do you, how do you drink out of a mason jar without it dumping all over you? Oh, I've gotten really good. You just have to close your mouth and make little tiny sips. <laughs> Pro tip from Kyla. We need to get a straw, camp. like a vaginal fantasy straw of some kind. That'd oh, be I would love that. that would be <laughs> okay, it's a like, crazy one. But it looks like we're flipping to each other really quickly a lot, and I'm starting to get a little motion sickness, so... Oh, I don't, I don't see that. I, f I feel like maybe, okay, every single month we log into Google Hangouts and everything is always different. Where to find the video is different, where to start the video is different, and it seems like now it feels like the, the how you change from person to person is a little bit different, so don't get nauseated, Bonnie. I'm just going to click on my picture, so it's That's just what I did. me, and, and I'm not being vain, okay. so I don't. I just, I just clicked on Felicia's picture so I can stare at her gorgeous hair for the interview. That's what I did. Okay, my, my hair looks good because I was shooting Co-Optitude and for the first time ever we actually had someone to do my hair. <laughs> so thank you. Was it your brother? Did your brother do your uh, hair? My brother did it. Yeah, I was like, here's a flat iron. Learn how to do it. Watch a couple YouTube videos. <laughs> Bonnie, what are you drinking? So we, uh, Just to wrap it up because I want to be consistent. Uh, so I'm using a wine glass that's almost as big as my head. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm drinking a yellow Riesling. Real Riesling. Right. That's my favorite wine. Me too. Yeah. I don't like the Riesling. They're so sweet. It's yeah. I like I like Riesling when I'm in the mood for a sweet white, but I don't usually. It used to be my go-to before I knew how to drink. Uh, is, that, is that a baby wine? Is that a baby wine? Kind of a baby wine. A little bit. A little it's bit okay. Of a baby. It's a delicious wine. It's like a. Gertzen, my Gertzen, 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 all the Gertzen, 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 Gertzen. I, I, if I drink as much whiskey as Veronica is drinking, I'd be passed out by now, so I have to start. <laughs> I drank two bottles of Vouvray wine, which is an even sweeter wine than you can possibly imagine with Riesling or Gewürztraminer on my 21st birthday. And Look that's at her, why just like Gewürztraminer. Gewürztraminer. Oh, I just say Gewürztraminer. Gewürztraminer. You know, I worked at a, like I've mentioned on the show many times, I worked at a liquor store for three years, and I think I just bullshitted my way through that word for like a really long time in a... Is this what a Gewürztraminer? Like profession. Yeah, the good of... German wine. 
Nah. Yeah. Yeah. When people go in for wine, unless they're wine snobs, I don't know. I, I For me, it was just like, it's not in a box, and it's cold, so I'm drinking it. I like Delicious. wine in a box now. Yeah, yeah it, you can get it at Whole Foods. It's totally legal now. If you get it, it is. Whole Foods. Totally yeah. legal. Yeah, <laughs> some good ones. It's totally legal. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh wait, wait. Also, I'm wearing. I got my Batgirl underoos. <laughs> hey. You got some of those? Uh huh. I'm wearing pants, so of course. No. Nope. <laughs> over. Nope. The, nope. None of us no, has over the underoos. Hot. Nope. Wait, not wearing pants. <laughs> nope. Okay, fine. I'm not wearing any pants. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to the book discussion, um, we do our shout outs to our local hangouts. So during the month between our hangouts, we have a really awesome forum on goodreads.com slash vaginal fantasy. And people there talk about the books, the alt book, all sorts of different books, even off topic things like their own writing. And cool part, coolest part is they have local hangouts. So they get together in person or online through another Google hangout to meet other vaginal fantasy um, uh, fans who want to discuss this book or other books. So I like to give shout outs to what's happening. In November, in Gothenburg, Sweden, the Viking Booty met, the Jville Vajayjays met, the Chicago, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if they have a name yet, but uh, they also met, and the Buttered Crumpets in the UK met. And in December, we have the Vaginal Fantasy Down Under, which is Australia, meeting. We have the Ambassadors of Smut in Orange County, the Naughty Nashvillians, the Austin, Texas Reverse Cowgirls, and the Gotham Quills and Quins. All those are local hangouts that are happening. So if you want to join one or create your own, just go to the local group section of the forums on goodreads.com slash vaginal fantasy. Thanks, ladies, for keeping us going. So um, I just want yes. to let everybody know that's using the vaginal fantasy hashtag. Uh, I went ahead I'm I'm went ahead and I'm retweeting a bunch of our viewers that are showing what they're drinking. So it might look like an Alcoholics Anonymous in reverse meeting thing on our Vag Fan thing, but it's interesting to see how many wine drinkers there are as opposed to like Goldschlager or something. So I thought I would retweet that. So if you see a bunch of people drinking, that's why they're drinking on our on our Twitter. Uh, yeah. I don't think and anyone it, would ever question why people were drinking on our Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. I know. I don't know why I thought I needed to announce that, but I just felt like that was my last responsible thing I was going to say. To them, so that was really uh, nice. But also, I kind of like sweet. gold schlager. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so our <laughs> book this month and our theme this month. So so we're kind of like trying to focus the group now that we are on our own channel. We're going to add extra content. Thank you, Veronica, for doing the very first alt book blog. We're going to be doing that every month. All of oh, Each one of us will just rotate through reviewing the alt books so we can have more discussion points around that. And um, we're going to center around a theme every month. So we've been doing that anyway. But this month was Superheroes. And our main book was called Mind Games by Carolyn Crane. And uh, I can read the description as Bonnie. Let me, let me, let me click on your... As me. Because <laughs> Bonnie's the only one who actually gets an actual book anymore because she's yeah. cool about it. Well... So the book is called Mind Games, The Disillusionist Trilogy, number one, and the description is, Justine Jones has a secret. A hardcore hypochondriac, she's convinced a blood vessel is about to burst in her brain. Then, out of the blue, a startlingly handsome man named Packard peers into Justine's soul and invites her to join his private crime-fighting team. It's a once-in-a-lifetime deal. With little of Packard's hands-on training, Justine can weaponize her neurosis, turn it outward on Mid-City's worst criminals, and finally get the freedom from fear she's always craved. Is it, is it the end of a problem? There is a dashing police chief who's fighting a unique breed of outlaw with more than human powers. And while Justine's first missions, including one against a nymphomaniac husband killer, are thrilling successes, there is more to Packard than meets the eye. Uh, with Packard's help, Justine has freed herself from madness, only to discover a reality more frightening than anyone's worst fears. Bum, bum, bum. Wow. That was dun, dun. Listening to you, like, drunkenly slur that description is my <laughs> thing. <laughs> I had two sips of absinthe. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's very strong alcohol. Yeah, save it for the trial. Save it for the trial. <laughs> okay, somebody else go. Somebody else say what they li liked about this book and what they didn't like, or if they didn't. Whatever. Go. Go, Kyla. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> Who goes? Who said? Kyla. Kyla, okay. go. Okay. okay. I really love this because I don't know if you've noticed, but I am neurotic. 
um, and have a lot of anxiety and a little bit of hypochondria and so <laughs> panic attacks. So anyway, um, it was awesome to see that turned into a superpower. <laughs> It's like it's like a dream come true for me, and um, <laughs> it was. I really liked it. Also, it was a little hard to get past Cubby um, being named Cubby and not picturing him as your dog. <laughs> that was also, a little he was kind weird. of a jerk, and I was like, "There's no way Cubby's a jerk." Um, spoilers. <laughs> so spoilers about Felicia's dog, and then um, uh, yeah, I I really liked it for you know. For those reasons, I thought it was really. It took a long time to to build up to um, the the actual plot too. I mean, like I think they really took their time, and I thought they were really. It was very intricate, and um, even though there were a few things that bothered me, um, just in terms of the, some the same kinds of things that bother me with urban fantasy and humor. Um, other than that, I love this book. Yay, Bonnie, <laughs> what did you think? I really like the book, too, uh, for similar re reasons as Kyla. I'm a hypochondriac, so I was kind of, it was kind of cool that, I don't think we've read a romance book where the main character is a hypochondriac, have we? I don't think, there's many that have been written, have they? I don't know. If anybody yeah, has no. any more, put them on Twitter, because I want to read all of them. <laughs> I feel like the dude is, but the lady isn't? I don't know. I think that's like WebMD meets Fifty Shades of Grey. That would be cool. <laughs> where it's just like, oh my god, I'm dying of everything, let's have sex. <laughs> no, I love that the the main character is a hypochondriac. To me, that's uh, there are so many different things that happen in this book that I could relate to, and I could be like, yeah, I would totally do that. That's exactly what would happen to me. I totally get it. Um, I like that there was like a dashing police chief. I don't think we've had the, the dashing police chief trope uh, yet in our romance books. I can't think of one. We've had bounty hunters, and we've had like detectives and things like that, but not actually anyone running the police station. So, um, I don't know. I have a lot of, like, fanfic ideas for Arrow and Gotham. That and, <laughs> and Constantine. And Constantine. And, yeah. So I, you know, and I guess on some level, Castle a little bit. But I just, yeah, just throw that in there. But no, I, I uh, for police chiefs. But I, I just like that that was in the book. And so I like the world building. Um, I, I'm a big fan of superhero stuff and supervillain stuff, so it was nice to have something that wasn't just vampires, werewolves, witches. You know, it was like, oh, superheroes for a change. That's actually kind of nice. So I, I was thrilled, and I want to read everything about this character. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, so I was definitely, and the sex scenes were great, and, yeah, I'm, I'm all in. So. Well, I, I just want to throw out, we're going to get to the characters later, but the awesome, awesome forum has made the love triangle um, Team Cucumber or Team Packard. Everything was introduced. So, um, yeah, I totally, I really liked it. And I liked the way that it was just, it, you were, it was just introduced and you just accepted it. And I liked it. Yeah, I liked, um, I found it was interesting that there are people who don't believe that these people with powers exist. Yeah. And it's kind of like a thing where they're like, well... No, I don't really buy it. Like, it's probably not real. But then it's so obvious that it is. Like, I guess they're still pretty underground, as maybe many superheroes are. But mm -hmm. I feel like in, in most worlds where there are super superheroes or people with abilities, it's pretty much out in the open. And usually they're kind of, you know, judged or... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It begins with a P. Guys. Prejudiced against. Prejudiced like against. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I really, in, in light of recent, recent events, I should definitely be more up on, on that particular vocab word. <laughs> um, well, it's funny, not funny. <laughs> Um, but it's a little drinky drinky and then suddenly my vocab goes out the window. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I thought that was kind of interesting that there are still people who aren't believers of these particular abilities and that, but that they can manifest in different ways and there's like three specific kinds or however many certain kinds there were or that, you know, they kind of really dig into without too much, you know, ex uh, not, not exploitation, not exhibitionism. Not um. Ex oh, uh, the, 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 no! This this thing where you the word, explain, where you explain stuff, the things. You explain the stuff. Exposition. Exposition. Yeah. Exposition. <laughs> Exposition. No, is that like an expo? 
Mm -hmm. Like a Comic Con? Yeah. Exposition. Okay. Just so, um, <laughs> told you vocab words. Um, oh, and, God, and without doing that too in a bad it's way, they, they explain, like, oh, you get your powers when you're a little kid, and it's whatever that thing you most want is. It's like, oh, that's, you know, that would kind of suck because what if you really wanted a more different kind of power? Mm hmm. But you're a baby, and you're dumb. You don't know that. You're dumb. No. Babies are so dumb. They're oh my gosh, dumb. so stupid. Dumb useless, and they can't do anything for themselves. Oh, they don't care get anything. a job. Oh, get a job, babies. <laughs> Hold your own weight, you stupid baby. Why do I have to carry you? No, Never every time I see a baby, walk. I'm like, you have legs. Learn walk, baby. Use them. What, if you didn't walk and you were in the wild, you'd be dead. You're lucky yeah. to love you because you're a baby. Exactly. They wouldn't be like, by a oh, lion. I'm not going to eat you. I'm going to, oh, ooh, you're is that like Is that why we want to stick their little feet in our mouths? Because they're like, oh. rum, 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 Yeah, rum, they're rum, like, eat, baby. Like because babies have those sharp little fingernails that can, like, <laughs> break glass. Like, they're just like, they're super, super. Why are they so sharp? Well, I don't they, and they need they vitamin do. D or something. They need to thicken that. They biotin shots or something. The baby. Oh, they need a cat scratcher. I don't babies, know. Babies are like tiny little wolver. Oh God, I'm sorry to change the subject, but Quest Journals on Twitter just tweeted the most a picture of Prince with a beret on his head, and it just made me laugh so hard because. <laughs> Can we talk about the beret? Because I, I had issues with the beret. Okay, let's move into character, even though we need to come back to plot, but let's talk about character, <laughs> because Team Cucumber, Ooh, Team Kebab, what are you, who are you for? It is half and half still. It is split. Oh, dude. <laughs> votes for Cucumber, 18 votes for Kebab, and six votes for Team Carter. Who is your brother? <laughs> who is your brother? But he's not really your brother. He's mm. actually not your brother. He. What was his power in order to... Um, it was a hopelessness? Being pissy? Oh, being pissy. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's pissy, like a brother. <laughs> so basically, everybody in the disillusionist group has a neurosis that they then channel into a victim to make them reform them. So one of them is a gambler. One of them is a hypochondriac. One of them is um, gets rid of hope. So all of them have a certain neurosis that they channel into bad guys, and, or, and that's their kind of team, which I thought was really clever. Um, but, but I could never remember Carter's, because all he did was just be hot everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Okay. okay, let's talk about the characters. We can talk about. Let's just talk about Otto. Okay, so Otto is the police chief, and yes, he wears a beret the whole time. And yes, that was not sexy. I'm just gonna put that out there. In my opinion, what did you guys think? No, <laughs> I had a really hard time picturing it as being as him being sexy because I really liked him. As, like as a character, but I could not get into the beret thing. I just had to imagine him. Just I just ignored the beret. I tried at first, like to be like, oh, green beret, like a green beret, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, and that still wasn't sexy because I pictured the little ribbon that comes out at the thing. And I just still, that's still not sexy. I'm sorry. I'm really <laughs> sorry, green berets. <laughs> Big guy characters that wear berets, and that's GI Joe and Che Guevara, and yeah. neither guys are hot to me. One looks like a guy who hasn't paid his college loans yet and the other guy looks like my dad. So Wait, it's are, not people, are there people out there who have paid their college loans? Well, I'm just saying she... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys! You jerk guys! <laughs> reminds me of every liberal arts college guy I've ever dated because they wore that shirt and because they had that poster up on their wall but they could never really explain who Shay was. So I just... I. I don't know. So people on the forum said they try to imagine him as Shay because of Benicio del Toro's. Hot. Oh God, that's exactly. I couldn't get. I could never be attracted to Otto Sanchez because I literally pictured Benicio del Toro yeah. in a French beret sitting on a sidewalk in Paris sipping espresso like this, and I was like, that is just not. That is the worst <laughs> image of a man I could ever imagine. <laughs> I'll flip you. Also, and he did, oh, oh, and Katrina, Katrina reminds us that uh, Otto also wore a cape. Oh, he did. Oh, God. Was it so, a short cape? Wait, I can't remember. I just meant like, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa. Oh, oh, shoulder. You know, I, went a, I went on a first date once with a guy who showed up to my front door wearing a cape. No. Yeah. And he it was like the door. 1997. And he showed up at my front door wearing a cape. I'm like, that's an interesting fashion choice. And he's like, well, I just think they needs to. It, the cape for men needs to come back. So he was like, 
trying to bring it back by himself, not realizing that's not how fashion trends start. And it was just so hard to like go to dinner with him and not start cracking up every time he left the table because it looked like he was about to go fight crime. <laughs> <laughs> he did it in such a, like he walked in such a slow way. I was like, dude, crime, run! I mean, team, team cucumber or team kebab? No, mm -hmm. we're gonna get to it. But team cucumber or team kebab, and we're gonna get to why those are in the book. But I just want to give a big shout out to whoever invented those because it made me laugh so hard. Yeah. Team kebab. Yeah. Team cucumber. Really? Wow. Okay, Veronica, what did you think of the book? And then we'll get into the characters and everything. Okay, so first of all, it was amazing compared to the alt. So that, mm -hmm. there was that. Um, Sorry. Uh, I just feel so bad. Um, I really liked. It was such an original idea. I think what really, what I really dug about it is that I haven't, like we've all kind of said so far, is that I haven't really read a book like that before, where there is a hypochondriac main character, and just the the general the powers that they have, the way they operate, all that was kind of new to me. And maybe I don't read a lot of superhero-y type fiction, um, but I really felt like it was pretty novel. Uh, and that's always exciting, especially in this space, because I feel like we retread over a lot of pretty common tropes time and time again. So this was that was pretty refreshing. Um, and the twist was actually a good twist. Like, I was really pretty surprised that that the police chief was not... Well, first they were like, oh, he's a bad guy. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. They've been kind of building him up in her mind throughout the whole book. Of course he's the ultimate bad guy. Of course he's Henji. And then at the end they're like, just kidding. No, he's not really as bad as you thought. Packard's a bad guy. And you're like, no, oh, it all makes sense now. <laughs> and... Um, and they're like, okay, well, he's a bad guy, but he was actually keeping things in check. He wasn't really that bad. Um, and so I thought it was it was, it was was pretty good. Uh, I made some of the comparisons in, in my vlog video about how, like, in Karma Girl, things were kind of handed to us on a silver platter. Like, everything was pretty obvious. And this mm -hmm. one had a lot more surprises up its sleeve. So I, I, I felt like that was a, there was a good, you know good basis for comparison between those two books in terms of that. Um, but overall, I really I really liked it. It was pretty gruesome. There were some pretty, like, the descriptions of, of how the uh, Silver Widow, or whatever her name was, like, put yeah. her, stuck her, her husband in a hole and let the ants eat his brains. I was like, whoa! Yeah. I can't get that image out of my mind. Can't get those ants out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, Did you I, see I, how I, the joke, like, came to me? And yeah, it's like, just like, as, as you were doing that, it. As, yeah. as, it was like, almost a pun, but I'll excuse you. It was not quite a pun, so I'll excuse you. It wasn't you. quite there. It wasn't quite <laughs> there. But yeah, well, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love this book. I read it uh, several years ago, and I just became obsessed with it because, like you guys say, it's it's so original. Um, and I, I will be honest with you, and I think we could talk a little bit in general about superheroes. I am not a big superhero fan. I don't generally, especially... I tend to gravitate toward indie comics in general, and then I feel in modern cinema, whether you're talking on TV or in movies, that we have so many women characters who are incredibly just there. <laughs> they're there to make the hero vulnerable. They're there to make the hero do this. They're here. They're basically a appendage, an emotional appendage or ve plot vehicle for the hero, and I see this a lot. Lately, I've been ranting a lot against Barbara from Gotham and Iris on The Flash. Both shows I love, but characters who are just egregious in the in the category of love interest, who is just nonsensical and just not smart. So I just love having a, a, a heroine who can be kind of a superhero and, and sort of subvert all the tropes of um, superhero genre in a way that I haven't seen in a long time. And I'm such a hypochondriac and neurotic and everything, so I my inner monologue is Justine all the time. That's why I loved it so much. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't mean to like dog. I'm I'm sorry. I don't mean to dog on superhero movies or TV, but it's just like every time I see it, I'm I'm always looking out for that female character who's just not, who who's just there to right. be. I mean, it just really annoys to me. To be awesome. To be th the same as what the men are there for. That would be nice. And, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're doing a good job on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Arrow's like that. Arrow and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has a, like equal amount of women who are both villains and superheroes yeah. that hold their own. 
Well, Gotham uh, has great like, female characters too, and so does Flash. I mean, Flash has. Gr I love the scientist character. It's just in order to be attractive to the superhero guy, you somehow have to be kind of a, a not not smart or 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 just very cliched. It's hard to get over the cliches of a girlfriend of a superhero. And even though that doesn't necessarily apply here, because she has her own power, yeah. um, it's just it's, a nice fresh take. Yeah, I yeah, think it really is. Books are going to be totally different than comic books, which are going to be totally different than TV shows. Because I feel like with books, they, well, maybe not with romance books. Romance books can fall into stereotypes pretty easily. Uh, and we've read many stereotypical type female in love interests and guy interests. But um, with this book, I really liked it just because the world building and such. But I'm, I mean, we could talk about this later as far as romance in TV shows that we watch right now, like The Arrow and uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and yeah. Black and all that. Off um, topic, off topic. But anyway, yeah. I just I just think it's refreshing to have a world that's not... Yeah. Like, how do you get around all the cliches of superheroes when we have them everywhere, right? So that's why I liked it. Yeah. I, made, I made a straw poll um, with, that you can access at uh, on our Vaginal Fantasy Twitter account. Um, so you can vote if you are Team Cucumber, Team Kebab, or Team Carter, who, all, who is also your brother. Oh yeah, that was, oh 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 yeah oh who is also <laughs> your brother? <laughs> but you didn't put Cubby on there because literally nobody wanted. Nobody Cubby. wants Cubby. Nobody oh, likes Cubby. Not Cubby. one person. A jerk. Love your dog. <laughs> love, love your dog. So far, Team Cucumber is in the lead. I just want to put that out. There. Oh God, I gotta vote. Okay, wait, let's talk about. Okay, let's just talk about overall the world building of the world. I've already said my piece on how I thought it was original. And everything. What did you guys think about the world building? Uh, did you buy that the superheroes were legit? Was it? Uh, did you just buy the world building, and was it interesting to you? It I bought it. Yeah, I bought it right away. Um, and then I love that they would just suddenly introduce things like, uh, oh, there's going to be the water wars, you know? And you're like, oh, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it kind of felt the way like I, I I saw Interstellar this weekend, and I hadn't read anything about it. Mm -hmm. And it felt exactly the same way in that um, I, I, I believed in it right away as every. <laughs> oh, no. And then, then Crosey mentioned uh, Jamie Heineman and his beret, and now I just want to die a little bit. Oh, oh. He, wore, he wore the beret because he had a fear of the same exact syndrome that Justine has, which is a made-up thing called vein star syndrome. And it's basically where you, you'd, it bas you'd have an aneurysm or something and die. And if you hit your head, it's more likely to sort of loosen it up. So, There's but, so there have choices. Like today, we saw a sneak peek of the new Sherlock special, and Cumberbatch is wearing a top hat, and Martin Freeman as Watson is wearing a bowler, and they totally do. They look great. So, so you one, think a bowler is sexy? I don't know about a bowler. And I'm very well like this in a fedora. Chaplin, hot. <laughs> really? You don't think Chaplin's hot? I don't know. I never looked at him close enough. I was just Hitler mustache. Uh, is that what throws you off? It's just cute. Yeah. It's a Hitler mustache. It's not hot. But Hitler it's ripped sad. it off of him. That Chaplin yeah. did it first. And Hitler made yeah. it bad. I mean, but he ruined it. He did it last. It. Yeah. It doesn't matter who who, who yeah. did it the second. It's Hitler uh, ruined. He ruined it, a lot of stuff. Did Hitler ever wear beret? Is there ever a Hitler beret? I don't remember. Oh God, that would be worse. Okay, so Otto. Okay, <laughs> he did ruin Hitler a lot of fedora. Stuff. I, I wish he'd worn a fedora. Yeah. Okay, there's so many other hats. There's so many other hats. Bowler. Otto. Otto. Otto's beret wasn't the only problem people had. People had a problem with Otto's name because it's not a sexy name, and people kept thinking like Mario Brothers kind of. Like Luigi, Mario, and Otto is the third guy? That's the missing triplet? People, I mean, I, I have to okay, admit. Well, first of all, that's kind of maybe racist because sometimes it's not an Italian last name. It's Italian and German. They're lumping them in with the Mario Brothers. That's not oh, good. Yeah. They're Italian. I know that. They're Italian American. Sausage. I don't, I'm Italian. I don't care. I don't think. Okay. I'm... Second of all, okay. Let's let's just get overlook the beret and the cape and the fact that he looks like Benicio del Toro, maybe. So, okay. but okay. what about his thick and cucumbery member? That was why everybody says Team Cucumber, guys, because yeah. there's a lovemaking scene, and I believe where does she mention the cucumbery appendage? Is it in? Tub, which is always unsanitary. <laughs> it's unsanitary. Why would you get cucumber in a hot tub? Because a hot tub shrinks things, so it should be a Vienna sausage, not a No, 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 a hot tub, because if it was cold in there, it would shrink it. 
Yeah. Oh, you're right. Right? Sorry. I got my penis physics mess, messed up. Sorry. Yes. I know. I know. I knew you knew what it was. I know. Okay, but did you did you find did you find him sexy during the lovemaking scenes? Because I found those very well written. Yeah. But still not him sexy because of the Benicio yeah. del Toro thing. I'm sorry. That's the last <laughs> person on earth I'd ever have sex with. I'm sorry, Benicio. You're excellent. Why, really? Yes. I don't know why. Him and Jeff know. Bridges never happening. <laughs> really? Together? No bridges. Now people are sending us sexy pictures of men in berets. Oh, <laughs> God. More just upsetting than anything else. What <laughs> berets ever going to be the new kilt? So well, we... you know what? You know what? I don't find Johnny Depp attractive. <gasps> well, now or then? Like Benny and June, Johnny Depp? Well, no. Now. Not, not 21 Jump Street when, like, obviously, duh, you know, yeah. height of my hormones. But now... <laughs> Johnny Depp is kind of like he could easily be on Gilmore Girls as a character. Johnny <sighs> Depp now is a little too emaciated and facial haired and skinny and fragile and he yeah. just makes very weird career choices. That's my problem with him nowadays. <laughs> that thing where he's a blonde art museum person is very odd. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that movie. Anyway, okay, we're yeah, so anyway, off sorry. topic tonight. Yeah, okay, sorry. Off, off topic. Take okay. a drink. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it is. Uh, the point is, sex scenes were were good. He's not sexy. Okay, so he wasn't sexy. Now let's move to okay. So Otto, Veronica mentioned, and a lot of people on the forum feel very strongly about Otto. Like some people are like, he wore a cape. He was too old for her. Um, he hated the beret. But then a lot of people were like, I really loved him because he kind of was set up to be this villain, and then he revealed himself to be as vulnerable. Um, and actually kind of a good guy, but just maybe a little bit blind, blinders on a little bit with regard to empathy. But mm -hmm. it, it was a great emotional twist to set up this really bad guy and then humanize him in a really gray way. It's a black and white world until we actually get to see um, him as a character. And in the end, Justine ends up with him. So how did you guys feel about that? Um, well, I'm, I'm glad that she used her own druthers to kind of figure the whole thing out and didn't just blindly listen to Packard because, you know, the whole Packard thing, she kind of had a bad taste in her mouth from the very beginning because she was like, you forced me into this. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I might lose my, sh my shit if I don't continue to zing you, but at the same time, like, this was not my choice. This was not my, you didn't tell me what the ramifications of joining up were going to be. Mm -hmm. And she's already like on her, on her guard a little bit about the whole thing. And I'm glad that it wasn't a real clear cut, like love story between them, that she was pretty guarded about it. Um, but then Otto, like it, it kind of shows that her gut instincts were in the right place throughout the book, except for Cubby. I mean, that was just a total cluster. Um, no offense, Cubby dog. <laughs> um, he's okay. He's not in the room. <laughs> he's not okay. He's not oh, good. 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 Thank God. Um, but she had a gut instinct about Otto, and it was it, it turned out to be pretty true. Like he is actually a good guy trying to do the right thing, and maybe he didn't have all the information or didn't understand what exactly he was doing with his abilities. In in some cases, um, you know, accidentally letting people die, for example, mm -hmm. uh, not not optimal. Um, but he ha his his heart was in the right place. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was she she had good gut instincts, which we don't see probably as often as we'd like to in these kinds of books. Uh, our straw poll, Team Cucumber, is pulling ahead of Team Kebab. But it's because we're only talking about Team Cucumber. Let's talk about Team Kebab. So Packard, as a character, was um, incredibly sexy to me until someone posted a picture of um, Carrot Top. Or what the hell is that? What's that comedian's what? name? Yeah, Carrot Top. Yeah, Carrot Top. <laughs> On the, okay, so we have a male red-headed intre love interest he is trapped by Otto Sanchez in this kebab place, and we eventually learn that he has the ability, the supernatural, you know, a superhero ability to help neurotic people channel um, and release their neurosis. So that's how he forms this team. But he does it 